Okay, so real quick today, I was just going to cover um, some concepts of hand positioning with your right hand picking hand. Um, when you want to start preparing it and you want to start getting into faster playing styles where you'll be doing some rapid type picking stuff. Um, now, everybody's hands are a little bit different and everybody has little uh, variations on, on how they, they do their picking hand. But I think the things that we're going to talk about today are, um, you know, for, if, you, if you analyze some of the greatest pickers in the world, a lot of them will kind of approach it the same way. There are obviously, you know, certain people who don't have, who have very unorthodox picking styles and, and can still get quite fluid and fast. But this is a good foundation I think you can build from. And um, while you're starting to develop, and you start, when you're practicing your your picking exercises, that you can really get the most out of it. Um, so, first of all, um, somebody was asking me about planting, and, and when you when you plant your hand, should your hand be on the strings, when you, or should you basically be over the strings? Um, you should definitely, in, in my opinion, anchor your hand on the guitar. This serves a few purposes. Um, your actual picking should come from the wrist, okay? So the forearm should be stable, obviously coming through down like a 45 degree angle across the pickups. Um, but when you plant your, your wrist, your hand, your palm down there, it allows your wrist just to kind of be, act as like a pivot. And that way your hand's not flying all around when you're picking, it's stable. And you want to really make sure your forearm stays very relaxed while you're doing it. But uh, well, we'll talk about where to where to actually plant it and how to do that. But so when your your hand is planted there, you're creating that stability for your wrist to be a pivot, and then you can just start this. Uh, you start getting this kind of like almost like a hummingbird effect in your in your hand, just using very small vibrations. Sometimes helping it out with just kind of um, um, the thumb a little bit. You know, something you'll see people kind of massage the string a little bit. It's called circular picking, but uh, we, we won't talk about that too much. But um, that, that, those are the ways that you can, you can really get a, a lot of speed out of it without a lot of effort because you're stable, you're on something that's, that's relaxing your forearm. Another reason is when you lay your palm down onto these strings, um, this is for, um, we're talking mostly in single note soloing styles, um, this hand takes care of a lot of the muting for you. All the, the strings that are usually lower on the neck. If I'm playing up here on the first string, my first finger can mute the, maybe the second string by the, the, its tip, but the other fingers are muted by the palm down here that is laying on the strings. So if you don't have that, it's going to be pure chaos with the noise, unless you have some kind of mute attached to your guitar down at the headstock or whatever. But obviously most people don't have that. And the third reason is your hand can memorize where the strings are at. You can sit here and you can you know, without even looking, you can be able to tell where all the strings are at. Your hand memorizes those. Um, now, if you're floating in midair, it has a lot harder time finding the exact strings that it needs. So, those are three very important reasons why you should plant. So, let's talk about where to plant. Now, depending on the size of your hand or whatever, you got to find something that works for you. Um, something I like to kind of uh, get people to, to concentrate on is you know, find a point in your hand. I like to maybe use the, the, we have the thumb muscle and really the pinky muscle down on this side of the hand, where they meet right at the center of the base of the palm. I like to kind of take that first on my, uh, and have my students take that point on their hand and place it right at the point where the sixth string meets the bridge, meets, hits the bridge, right where that string comes out right there off the, off the bridge. You take that point and you place your hand right there. Now that's not going to be exactly right for everybody. From there, you kind of want to just adjust where your hand is at, um, making it comfortable, and taking your, see how my, my picking hand, it stay, it, uh, you want to keep it at the same angle. You don't want to do this. You don't want your wrist deviated from the angle of your arm. Well, however your arm comes down, keep your wrist straight. Therefore, you're going to have a lot less tension in your hand and um, you know a lot less chance of, of injuring yourself or getting some tendonitis or whatever. So taking that concept, we just want to 
plant your hand and adjust, you know, like the back of my palm is all coming all over the bridge and right off the bridge, right where the strings are meeting. And then, um, depending on how flat you want your hand, your thumb muscle can also be laying on the strings. And I find the flatter your hand is and the straighter your wrist is, the more relaxed it is. Um, and then you can just start practicing your picking exercises just using that. You have your stability there. Every once in a while, I'll, find, you know, I'll see players, and I do it myself, like people like Pertucci, they actually plant their pinky as well. John Pertucci of Dream Theater. And he'll, he'll do like that, and he actually puts it around the pickup. But it gives him an anchor. Um, you'll see some, a lot of fast players do that. They like, really anchor their hand really, really heavily on the guitar, and it just allows them to do this, this very fast picking. Um, also, another thing could be the pick that you choose. Um, I choose, I use these little Dunlop Jazz 3 picks, which are used by a, a lot of really fast players like, you know, Joe Bonamassa, Eric Johnson, John Bertucci, um, you know, I think Alexi Leo or whatever, whatever the guys, that, there's a lot of people who use this. A John McLaughlin, they all use this exact same pick pretty much. And, or either the red or the black one, or I think Eric Johnson has his own signature model of it. But um, it is small, it is stiff, and it is sharp. And all those reasons, when you're picking, you should, when I pick, when I hold the pick, I have very, very, very little bit of the pick exposed. You can barely see the, barely see the tip, and I'm just raising the string when I pick. That's all you need to do. The less friction, the better. And the fact that it's a sharp pick, it has a very quick attack, so it gets off the string very fast, and so you can recover and do it again. If you have a rounded tip, you gotta kind of round that tip every time. It's a little bit slower attack. I mean, there's a lot of fast players that use big, regular standard picks, too. So, and it's almost essential that you use a pretty, a relatively stiff pick. It doesn't have to be extra heavy like this, but, you know, at least a medium heavy or more. Therefore, your pick is not having to rebound in between um, every pick stroke every time. You, you are controlling the string. It's kind of like if, if you pick the string and, and the, 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 the pick bends, is it up to bend when you pick a string? And then you have you have to keep you trying to get something rapid. It's almost like you are having to wait for this pick to to rebound, and um, uh, and it's kind of like the guitar playing you, and you're not playing the the guitar. So uh, use a pick that you can control more. They're a little more difficult to use in the beginning, but um, it's well worth it. So using those concepts, I think you should, if you practice your technique exercises with that, and remember keep your wrist straight, and then pick from the wrist and as small as motions as possible. Just enough to get past, past the string and that's it. And then come back. If you find yourself doing stuff like this, you're not gonna get very fast. You need to really get tiny, tiny, tiny strokes. That's why I think like the hummingbird approach while you're doing this stuff. You will find what works for you. Everybody's hand's a little bit different, the positioning and where exactly you wanna plant. But when you do that, keep it the same and then you'll get a lot of consistency in your picking hand, which when you apply that with all your regular picking exercises, will really make your playing take off much, much faster. All right, so I hope I covered enough here. Uh, just uh, go to guitarlessons365.com. Let me know what you think. Please comment, subscribe, and uh, uh, support the site in any way you can. I really appreciate it. Thanks, bye-bye.